welcome to another episode of Six Five on the Road at BMC Connect. I'm your host, Stephen Dickens, and I'm joined by Mark and Anthony from BMC. Hey, guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for having us, Thank Steve. Thank you. So tell the listeners and viewers what you do for BMC. Let's get started. Let's start with you, Anthony. So I'm a DevOps architect and evangelist for BMC. So my role is I go and talk to companies about what's the art of the possible? What can they do with the BMC suite of tools and how can they how can they make working a delight? That's that's really what I do. I guess I'm a, a seller of happiness, Steve. A seller of happiness. I love that. And you, you've got a lot to follow up with. <laughs> I don't know. I really <laughs> seller yeah. of happiness. Come on, you've got to tell yeah, that. Well, I'm the lead uh, product manager, and I work with Code Pipeline, um, Code Insights, and Avondate. And I'm focused on the developer experience. Anything I can do, well, a seller of happiness, but to work towards making their lives better and things easier for those developers. So, topic of the session today, we're talking about it a little about it off camera. These are systems of record. Mm -hmm. They're vital to the business. They typically are the business for most of the shops that we're talking about. So, what challenges do you see those teams having? The fear of change, we're mm -hmm. talking about it off camera. Yeah. A lot of this code's critical mission critical, running the business. How are you seeing that manifest? Is it COBOL's fault? Is that just the way the system structure? We'll go to you first, Anthony. Yeah, I, I think, well, so to start on the COBOL part, I think COBOL gets a bad rap. I'm with I, you there. I think that COBOL is a fine language. I think everybody wants to put all the sins of the past into COBOL. For me, it's it, French versus German versus English. Right. It's a language, Yeah, right? you learn. You, if, as long as you understand your patterns and how to basically engineer a system, whether I'm in Go or I'm in COBOL or I'm in Node or I'm in whatever, it, it you're, you're creating something, right? Yeah. The choice of clay shouldn't matter. So like I've not heard that I, one. I'm going to steal that one. The, uh, you, you, I give you rights to it. The, uh, but I think the fear of change thing, you know, a, a lot of companies, these are their critical systems. These are the core of their business. This is where the money's at. And they're scared to make changes because the people that used to understand these systems backwards and forwards are leaving. And frankly, it's no way to live. It, you can't be scared of your system and your technology. You need to dictate to your technology. Don't have the technology dictate to you how you do things. And I think that's, you know, just frankly, I think that's where BMC comes in and helps companies bridge that skills gap that they have between the next generation of people coming in and the ones that left. So, you know, what I'm hearing a lot is, you know, how do I manage this? Because companies can't stay pat because these systems are too important mm -hmm. but they can't just blindly make changes and you know hope it works they have to be uh cognizant of what they're doing so coming to you mark if that's the vision and that's where customers are how are you engineering the bmc products to kind of address that vision right as i said i look at that developer experience and i live with that and that fear they have and i understand it because i was a developer yeah so we look at ways that i could basically do magic. Could I run the application and have it magically just chart it out and show exactly all the database calls and program calls, all that? Could I have the code charted out so I can take a complex section of code and chart it out and say, oh, this does this and this does this. It's taking what could be hundreds of thousands of lines of code for millions and making it clear and concrete in a visual way and now with text because some people are visual like myself and other people have to have it described so you gotta have a ui that adapts right and we do it many different ways to work with how that developer likes to understand the code so guys it's 2024 we're four minutes in and we've not talked about ai so yeah, I'm, I mean this I'm is going to be a record somewhere, I'm shocked. right? It's going to be yeah, yeah. so. All joking aside, we're starting to see Gen AI come across the entire developer mm -hmm. landscape, code assistance. We're seeing that come holistically across. How are you seeing that coming, particularly into the mainframe? I'll go to you first, Anthony. How are you seeing that with some of the customers, and then we'll go to you, Mark, around how you're embedding it into some sure. of the solutions. So I think the mainframe 
is leaning into AI even more, um, uh, even more than you're seeing on some of your distributed and cloud systems. I think the mainframe is really looking at AI as a tool that can be used in the future to help with what Mark was just describing, which is I have millions of lines of code that I need to understand, that I need to parse. And even if the guy who wrote it back in the day is still there, it's now become so complex and had so many layers put on top of it that even they probably don't understand. And Mark, that's the key point. We've seen the BMC Amy assistant announcements while we're here at the show. I think from a product point of view, and Anthony touched on it, that explanation of code, maybe that original developer's not there, maybe it's coming to a new team. Talk to me a little bit about how you're seeing that from a product point of view. Right. And that's something where, like I said, we've had the charting and we would have tables and we'd have ways to explain it, which we've had great success. But for the last like 20 years, I've had developers say, could you explain to me what it does? Yeah. And I would kind of laugh at that because that's impossible. How could you go in and explain it? But in, in the, the last- lines of COBOL, pull apart that and understand. And tell me the business. Yeah you know, logic, what it is and how it works, impossible. And those people have typically left the organization. Yeah. yeah. The people who wrote the code 30 what, years ago have gone. I need that quick summary of what it does. And then it's over the last two years, last year, it was like AI was the solution. So we didn't take AI and say, oh, what can it do? We started with that problem, and that was the one remaining problem I had. And AI magically can deliver what they've asked for. Well, I think, Mark, that's a fantastic way for us to wrap up. AI magically doing what customers ask for. I've not got a better way to wrap up this. Guys, it's been great having you on the show as always. As Thank always, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching another episode of 6.5 On The Road coming to you from BMC Connect. Please click and subscribe and do all those things for the algorithm. Check out the additional content from the show, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.